I began to I began to pray and just kind of seek the Lord about it, and I felt Him leading me in a in a, in a certain direction, and. Uh, so I'm going to share some slides with you tonight. I'm going to share some statistics with you. I'm going to share some facts with you about the power of words. A mind of God represents or releases the heart of God, Brother Billy. It's what Brother gill has been teaching us about. He's been teaching us about a holiness of the mind. Everything begins here. This is the, this is the, the center. The brain is the center of all things. And this, it's where it starts at. So I just want to share... A few slides with you tonight. I got some. I got some slides that I want you to look at. The power of our words, our holiness of speech. Proverbs thirteen and three, and these are English Standard Version, kind of breaking it down a little bit. He says, "Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens wide his mouth comes to ruin." Proverbs twenty one and twenty three says, "Whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue." keepeth himself out of trouble. Now, Brother Larry, that says a mouthful right there when you stop and think about what it says. If you can keep your mouth and your tongue, you're going to keep yourself out of trouble because that's, that's what leads to it. And before I get any further, I just want to tell you tonight that I'm not casting stones because in my lifetime, Sister Judy, I've said things to people that I've regretted. I've said things that I wish I could have taken back, Sister Crystal, that I, that I really regretted. But once the words are spoken, you can't take them back. So this teaching really, really touched me. It really, it really, really touched me about the power of our words. And I just, I've got about five or six slides that I'm just going to kind of go through. And I just want you to kind of, kind of look at them, kind of, kind of take in. I'll read some of the words off of them before I actually get into my lesson. But the first one says the power of our words. Uh, it, it, it's really dynamic what we say. And a lot of times, uh, I think it's how we say them and not just what we say. You know, it's, it, it's, it's how we say them and, and how, how they're used. It's the, it's the power of words, we, if you will. The power of words can move you to tears, evoke absolute joy, or lead you in action. There are words of encouragement, of sympathy, of love, and admiration. The right words can give you strength. It can define your faith. It can give flight to things that live in your imagination. Words will inspire you, cut you, bring you back to life. They will comfort you in your time of needs. Words will nourish your soul. That's what words can do when they're strung together. The power of words. Speak life. Be positive. Love. Kindness. Joy. Speaks life. Blessings. Help someone along the way. Words speak life. Words speak life. Courage. Strength. Blessings. These are not words that we want to use right here. These are words that you never really want anybody to say to you, that you want to use about you or that you want to use against someone else. I'm not going to even read any of the words. You can see a lot of them, but they are negative words. They have a ne negative connotation when you're talking about someone's. And these type of words can hurt. They can, they can destroy because speech is power to persuade, to convert, to compel. The tongue is not steel, but yet it cuts. Words can harm and heal. It can encourage and instigate. It can do and it can undo. It can inspire and it can discourage. Or it can make and it can unmake. With our words or with our speech alone. If we understood the power of our thoughts, as Brother Gio has been teaching us about, we would guard them more closely. If we would understand the awesome power of our words, we would prefer silence to almost anything negative. If we understood the awesome power of our words, we would prefer silence to almost anything that we would speak negatively. 
In our thoughts, in our words, we create our own weaknesses and our own strength. A lot of times, our thoughts that we think about ourselves can lead us to be strong or it can lead us to be weak. You know who we lie to more than we lie to anybody? We lie to ourselves. So what we think, as Brother gl has been teaching us, has an effect on us. It, it will affect us. Words so innocent and powerless as they are, as standing in a dictionary. Now if you just went down and you just looked at a dictionary, Sister Meredith, and you just began to go through the words, you wouldn't think a whole lot about it. You know, they were just, you know, you think about their definitions, you wouldn't think so, 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 so much about it. But how potent for good and evil they become in the hands of one who knows how to combine them. Right. Nathaniel Hawthorne said that. When you know how to combine words and put them together, the good or the bad, either way, Brother Marcus, that you can do with them. Words are powerful. Words are very, very powerful. I begin to think about this, and, and I wanted to start out tonight by telling you, and this is the way I feel, if, you, if you've struggled with what Brother Jill has been teaching us about the holiness of the mind, I believe it's going to be harder for us to accept the rest of these lessons that are coming. Not only what I'm going to teach tonight, but what he's going to continue teaching when we get into holiness of the dress and the hair and the different things. If you can't get this first part, if you can't get what he's talking about with the mind, having a mind change and what goes on up here, then it's going to be very, very difficult. I've been, I've been praying these past four weeks. As he taught us in Ephesians chapter 4. And that, that really, really impressed me. It really, really stuck out to me. But I've been praying, Lord, don't allow my mind to become so calloused. Don't let the word become so commonplace that it goes in and it goes out and it does not do any good. Don't let my mind become so callous that it doesn't affect me, that it doesn't want me, that it doesn't want to make me change. When the word's gone forth, it should produce a change in people. And that's what I've been praying. I want to be willing to accept whatever changes God wants in my life because I'm not perfect. I know I'm not perfect. We strive for perfection. These lessons on holiness of the mind that Brother jill has been teaching us and what he's going to allow me to bring the next couple of weeks is a matter of life and death spiritually. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Can, can I say that again? It is a matter of life and death spiritually. Not only for ourselves, but for those that we come in contact with every day. How we affect people every day that we come in contact with. I really felt like these lessons on speech that I get to, get to talk about is going to display within us a spirit of meekness. Now you remember, Brother Jill's referred to it quite often. When I, when I talk about meekness, we think about meekness as being timid. We think about meekness as being shy. We think about meekness as being, being backwards, so to speak. But that's not what meekness is at all. It's power under control. It's being able to control ourselves, being able to control our thoughts, being able to control what we say, being able to control how we act and how we present ourselves. So it will produce the spirit of meekness in us. We know it's a fruit of the spirit, being able to control what goes on in our life. Proverbs has a lot to say about what we say. Proverbs has a lot to say about what we say. In fact, the subject of the tongue and how we use our words is perhaps the major theme of the book of Proverbs. Over 150 times in the book of Proverbs alone, it speaks about the mouth, it speaks about the tongue, and it speaks about the lips. Over 150 times. One of the central issues of the book of Proverbs is how's we, how we use our tongue. I'm really not someone that talks a whole lot. I, I really don't have a whole lot of words to say. I will talk to people, be friendly. You know, I talk on my job, I greet people, but just to say a whole lot of words, I really, really don't. And, and as I begin looking through this, Brother Billy, as I begin to study about this, it really wants me to say a whole lot less. It really, it really wants me just to keep my mouth shut sometimes and not say anything at all. Matter of fact, it, it would just please me to sit up there and just show you slides all night. <laughs> Because it, it, it really it really it really touched it really touched home with me. The more I, the more I the read about this, the less I really want to speak. According to researchers, 
Each person here will open his or her mouth. And ladies, it is a higher average for you. I do not know why. An average of 700 times a day. Some maybe more, some maybe less. In those 700 times, you will use an average of 18,000 words that you speak in a day's time according to the research that I found. Think of what a few words can convey or what a few words can say. Mr. Watson, come here. I want you with the first words spoken over the telephone. What hath God wrought were the first words sent by Moore's code over the telegraph wire. One small step for, for man, one giant leap for mankind were the words spoken by Neil Armstrong when he walked on the moon. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask instead what you can do for your country. Spoken by JFK at his inauguration. Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, probably the most famous words ever spoken by an American president, said four score and seven years ago our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the principle that all men were created equal. Your words are important because with your words you will either say something worthwhile or you will say something that's not worth anything at all. Very important. An important key to success in life is to understand the power of words. It, 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 this really stuck out to me, brother. Gio. It says a word is a thought eternalized. A word is a thought eternalized. It will last forever. You told us last year when you taught on, on the holiness of the mouth, the holiness of speech, that every word that's uttered since mankind came into existence is hanging somewhere in the air. It's still out there. So it's a thought eternalized. It's put out there forever and ever. Our thoughts do have a great effect on us, even though they are internal. What we think affects the way we live our life. It affects our emotions. It affects our attitudes. It affects our behavior. A thought spoken, however, has even more power because it can never be taken back. Once it's out of your mouth, you can't bring it back. It's, it's there. One writer said every time you speak, you influence the world. Either you're building it up or you're tearing it down. So your words carry weight. What we speak and how we say it carry weight. I want us to be aware that our speech is important and it's powerful. I thought of Ecclesiastes 3.7 because it tells us that there is a time to keep silent and then there is a time to speak. I thought about the Tower of Babel and the unity of the people because they spoke the same language. The Bible says in Genesis 11 and 1 in the English Standard Version, now the whole earth had one language and the same words. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they all have one language, and this is the only beginning of what they will be able to do. And nothing that they propose to do will be impossible for them. The Lord knew that the people could accomplish anything once they had set their mind to it because they spoke the same language. They spoke the same words. And when we as a church, I thought about it like this, when we as a church speak the same language and we speak the same thing, there's nothing that we can't accomplish with the help of the Lord. We all get on the same page. There's nothing that we can't accomplish when we set our mind to it. Webster's Dictionary defines speech as the faculty of uttering articulate sounds or words as in human beings. The faculty of expressing thoughts by words or articulate sounds. That which is spoken, words uttered in connection with expressing thoughts. Noah Webster, who wrote Webster's Dictionary, said speech was given to man by his creator for the noblest of pur purposes. It was given to us for the noblest of purchase. Speech is a quality that's unique to humans. It's verbal communication. 
And Brother Gio used this illustration last year that you see two dogs and they're just barking at each other and that's all they're doing. They're just barking. There's no communication going forth. So we as human beings, God has given us the ability to communicate with each other through our words. No other creation has that ability. God gave it to mankind. The origin of speech came from God. He gave mankind the ability to speak from his thoughts, from his heartfelt emotions, and from the innermost desires that he has in his heart, Brother Johnny. He gave us that ability. It was God who spoke the first words in the book of Genesis. When God spoke, things began to change. Genesis 1-3, it says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Genesis 1-6 says, Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Genesis 1-9. and Genesis 1 and 11, all these say, then God said. Genesis 1 and 14, 1 and 20, 1 and 24, 1 and 26. Eight times God spoke and things were created that were non existent before. It came, Brother GL, from the mind of God. The logos that you taught us about. It was a thought process that He had. It was His thought that He wanted to create mankind, that He wanted to create the world. It came from His, his thought. And speech came forth, and he said, let it be. And it was. Powerful, powerful speech. The first one to corrupt the power of the tongue was Satan, who uttered his boastful words, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the tops of the cloud, and I will make myself the most high. And in his rebellion against God, he took one-third of the angels with him. Because of the words that he spoke, he took one-third. He deceived one-third of the angels because of the things that he said. I'm talking about the power of words. He lied to himself. The Bible says, John eight forty four says that he's the father of all lies. Satan is the father of all lies. The first one to speak a lie and the first one to believe that. Such a nature of pride. Why did God give him speech just like everything else? So he could be worshipped. So he could worship God, Brother G.L. Even before Eve took the first bite of the forbidden fruit, she, mis she misused her tongue by adding to what God had said. When Satan asked, did God really say that you may not eat fruit from any tree in the garden? The woman answered the snake. We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God told us you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not even touch it or you're going to die. That's not what God told Adam. He told him not to eat of the tree in the middle of the garden, the knowledge of good and evil. And she added to it. So she took her tongue and she added more to it. And then Satan, Satan lied to her again. He says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, You shall eat of every tree of the garden that corrupted the nature of mankind. And from then on. After they sinned, what began to happen? Adam began to blame Eve, and Eve began to blame the serpent. It was a blame game. Lies were, lies were spoken. The moment Adam and Eve, Eve sinned, the peace and unity of paradise was lost. Their sin immediately threw them into conflict. Adam blaming Eve and Eve blaming the serpent, serpent for their sinful actions. Their sin initiated the war of the sexes. Disunity rather than unity came to characterize the human race. Life in the world became life in a battlefield all because of the word spoken by the serpent. I'm reminded of the story of Balaam. He was, a, he was a sorcerer who was asked by the Moabite king Balak to put a curse on the Israelites as Moses was leading them toward Canaan. Balak promised to pay Balaam for bringing all the evil do, evils upon Hebrews or the Israelites whom he feared. In the night, God came and told Balak, he said, don't put a curse on them. Don't you say anything at all. Don't you speak anything at all. Balaam sent king's message away, but however, he did go with them. And we all know that he went with them, and the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing there. He began to beat the donkey three times that he beat the donkey, and the Lord said that the Lord opened the donkey's mouth. And he said, Balaam, what have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? The Lord gave the donkey the ability to speak. The First Amendment, as we know it, Brother Cody, gives us the freedom of speech. But now the freedom of speech is not absolute. 
The Supreme Court of the United States has recognized several categories of speech that are excluded from the freedom of speech and has recognized that governments may enact reasonable times, places, or manners restrictions on speech. So you may say what you want. I may say what I want, but always remember there's consequences involved. Especially with God. Especially with God. Speech is a communication of our thoughts. So thoughts are the root consideration, as Brother Jill has been teaching us about holiness of the mind. Destructive thinking becomes destructive speaking. What goes on in here is going to come out here. What starts here is going to manifest itself here. It's going to, it's going to happen. Well, Jill spent several weeks teaching us holy of the mind, changing our thought process, if you will. Not only can we change ourselves, but we can change those that we come in contact with if we can get this mind in the right place. I thought of it this way, but as I began to study and began to read, I thought, I thought about it this way. We, we, we talk speech is transferring a thought from one mind to another. It's transferring one thought from one mind to another. So I can take my thoughts and I can share them with you and then it can affect, it'll affect you either good or it'll affect you bad. So when you, when you share that thought, when you share it with somebody, no matter, no matter how you're speaking it, it affects them. So it's a, it's a shared thought from one to another. When we, when we hear that, it can begin to take root in our mind. It can, like I said, it can either be good, Sister Kim, or it can be bad. So we have to be careful what we say. The, proverb, the book of Proverbs gives a special attention to words and how to use them. Now most of these... And it's, 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 it's the Bible. I, I can back it up with what the Word of God says. The majority of those 150 verses talk about this as being bad. We know that we can use our mouth for good, but you get to study in the book of Proverbs, and it says there's four common speech patterns as described in the book of Proverbs. There's the controlled tongue. Those with this speech pattern think before speaking. They know when silence is the best and give wise advice. There is the caring tongue. Those with, speech, with this speech pattern speak truthfully while seeking to encourage others. There is the conniving tongue. Those with this speech pattern are filled with wrong motives, gossip, slander, and they twist the truth. And then there's the careless tongue. Those with this speech pattern are filled with lies, curses, Quick-tempered words which can lead to rebellion and destructions. Proverbs 6 speaks about seven things that the Lord hates. And two of those deal with the mouth. A lying tongue and a false witness that spreads lies. Seven things the Lord hates and two of them have to deal with our mouth and what we say. The Bible speaks about many different uses of the tongue. The lying tongue. There's the flattering tongue. The proud tongue, the overused tongue, the swift tongue, the backbiting tongue, the tail-bearing tongue, the piercing tongue, the destructive tongue, the silent tongue, the tongue used as a sword, the encouraging tongue, the healing tongue, etc., etc., etc. And most of these will fit into those four categories that I told you about. Psalms 52 and 2 speaks about the tongue being a sharp razor. Proverbs 12 and 18 speaks about the tongue being a sword. Psalms 64 and 3 speaks about it being arrows. Proverbs 26, 20, and 21 speaks about it being wood for fire. It also talks about it being wood, but it also talks about it being a fountain of life, about our tongue being used as a fountain of life, apples of gold in a silver setting, and choice silver. Matthew, Matthew 12 and 34. It's where it comes from. This is Jesus' words. This is Jesus speaking. He said, O generation of vipers, how can you evil being, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It's what's, 
It's what's on the inside of us. And we, we talk about the heart being the, the, the central issue. The book of Proverbs says, out of the heart flows all the issues of life. It comes from within us. It comes from within us. He said, how can you, how can you speak out of the abundance of the heart? Because you're, you're evil. You're an evil generation is basically what he was telling them. How can you do this? Matthew 15 and 18 is Jesus speaking what it does. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. But I looked up that, that, that word, whatever comes out of us defiles us, and that word defile, Brother Johnny, means to pollute or violate the chastity or purity of the heart or mind or language. So when it comes out and it defiles us, it's actually putting pollution into us, if you will. It's, it's polluting us. We have to be careful what we allow to come out of our mouths because it actually represents what's on the inside of us. Jesus boldly said these evil things come from our innermost nature. They're not accidents. They didn't just pop out or they just did slip out. It's within us. But Ray, it's what's on the inside of us. The heart, the mind is the source of a man's true character. And therefore, if his purity or impurities... It's the seat of emotion, and it'll show the true person as he really is. I'm still talking, talking about holiness of speech. It all, go, it all goes together. Um, number three, vocalized thoughts. Anything that we say. When we say something about someone or about someone, it can either be taken back. It can never be taken back. It's either good words or it's bad words. So, so we really have to be careful how we speak about other people. Not only how we, and as I, as, as I started out, not only how we speak about other people, but how we speak to people. Because I, I really feel like a lot of times it's in how we say it. You know, uh, Brother Burke told us when we, when we were getting ready the other night, he said this mouth can't speak two languages. You know, we, it, it can't do it. It's, it's not possible. It's going to say one or it's going to say the other, Brother G. It can't speak two languages. So anything that we say, vocalized thoughts, things that we put out there, things that we, that we talk about. And, and I really thought about this scripture right here, Matthew 12 and 36, and this is Jesus speaking again, but I say unto you every idle word, and that, that word idle there means useless or barren. It doesn't produce any fruit. It doesn't do any good. It doesn't help anybody when it's, when it's an idle word. That men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. You're going to stand before God and give, give an account of every idle or useless or barren word that we speak. That's something to, that's something to think about when, when, when you look at that. When, when you think about that and you, you read about that. It makes us be careful about what we, what we say. Written correspondence paper as well as electronic whether they're generated from your own mind or they're shared from somebody else's don't text or share anything that is not something that would please God I said don't text or send anything that's not pleasing to God. Whether it's pictures or words, it's wrong. It's wrong. I've, I've, got, a, I've got a boss man, and hopefully he's not watching this. Um, just so Stacy know who I'm talking about, but a lot of times he'll send an email. And uh, when I get the email, but Larry, I just think that he's just he's got to be fighting mad when he sends that email out. You know, sometimes it's just the way that I perceive it. It's just the way that I look at it. When I know that he's sat in my chair right there at my desk and sent out emails the same way before, and I know he's not intentionally being, being, being mad or, or he's mad. It's just the way that we perceive it or the way that we take it sometimes. Whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Instagram, Snapchat, MySpace, Tumblr, Flickr, Periscope, Vine, or Tinder. 
Now, some of you are looking at me like I've lost my mind. I told Brother GL today, I got to studying about this and got to thinking about this, and there's more than those up there. <laughs> 